Okay, so the model changes are all done. Okay, we've updated the database. Now we're going to actually focus on the applicant, okay, controller, and then the views for applicants so we can actually uh, carry out our job and get it done, right? So I'll bring up here controllers. I'll grab the applicants controller and come down to views, okay, and here are applicants. So we'll start with the create, right? Now, one of the first things, of course, we've talked about this before because we did do some work with file uploads with our medical office last term, right? Uh, begin form, okay? The HTML form requires an additional option, okay? We have to set an enclosure type in the request, okay? So that that's in the header of the request so that it knows to anticipate and look for files, right? Now, the only overload that we can use that allows us to satisfy that is a bit more verbose. We have to very clearly state, right, that instead of just begin form, we're going to begin form and specify this will submit data to the create action of our applicant's controller, okay, using method post. And now we can specify that the enclosure type will be multi-part form data, right? First thing so that we can actually upload any file whatsoever. Okay. Now. Uh, I've got my validation summary here, so underneath that probably I'm going to stick in a div. Actually, I'm going to do it this way in my copy paste file. Um, right? There's the form group here. The label just says profile picture. Okay. And then here's the little magic, input type equals file. Been around from the early days of HTML, it's still very useful, right? Uh, notice the name is the picture. You'll see that we'll actually use that in code later on so that I can specifically ask for the file that was uploaded by this input, right? Now that's good for the, for the picture as I'm creating a new applicant, but I also wanna select files, multiple files to upload. So it made sense to me to do that a little further down the screen maybe down here between uh, the last, uh, uh, the editor for the email and before I have my checkboxes, right? So down here, I'll stick in another div for the form group, okay? I'll just have a label that says upload resumes slash letters, you know, whatever words you want to put there as a prompt is fine. Input type equals file once again, okay? This time, the name I'm giving it is the files, right, plural doesn't do anything other than it's a name, but I'll use it in code to refer to the da data coming from this input control. Here's the most important thing, multiple, right? Setting multiple means that I can select, you know, control down and click multiple files, or use shift, collect, select a whole range of files and upload them all at once, right? Don't worry, in edit we'll be able to add even more files if we can't get them all the first time, right? We can upload multiple files with this control. So that's it, that's all we have to do in the actual edit view Okay, now let's come back to the controller then. I'm just gonna shrink everything down first of all, so we can just quickly find all our actions here. That's control M O if you're wondering. Okay, so the uh, create, there's nothing to do in the get, right? The get request, okay, for creating, no changes needed there whatsoever. But it all happens here in the post, so I'll expand that one. Remember, we have our bind include for the applicant. I'll just press enter so we can bring things down, see it all on the screen. We have our string for selected skills, right? Our string array, right? But that's not it. We need some additional stuff here, okay? Um, there are actually two ways to pull information from uh, fi uh, input type equals file. I can actually specify parameters here, or I can just encode go request.files, right? So I decided to show both approaches. I find it's usually easier if you have a collection, if you use that multiple equals multiple, to do it as an actual parameter up top. So the parameter we need is a collection, an ienumerable collection of objects of type HTTP posted file base, right? That was in our PowerPoint when we first learned about file upload last term. That's the kind of object all the uploaded files are. So having a collection of them is I enumerable. This just gives me a way to refer to that entire collection. It will pull it out and have it ready for me to work with it in code by putting it as a parameter up here. Okay.
So now we come into our try block. This bit, we remember that's just to do with the uh, check boxes so we can add all the selected skills, okay? Then we check if the model state is valid. Might as well wait for that. I mean, if there's validation errors to show, then I don't have to worry about processing uploaded files yet. Wouldn't even want to. So I'll come inside here. It makes sense to do it here. What am I going to do? Well, we've seen the code before, and it's actually, you know, quite a few lines of code in order to actually pull the data, stream it through into a byte array, and so on and so forth. So this is a clear example where it makes sense to have a... <laughs> a separate method that I call. Plus, I can then reuse it. Because remember, we're going to be doing this sometimes with create and also with edit, where I want to grab this data and work with it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of uh, methods, okay? And I'll just call them each inside here. I haven't created them yet, but I'll have an add picture, okay? Where we pass the applicant object and then here's the other way I can pull data out of the request. I can just write in code, say, request.files, and by passing the name, remember the name that we actually set for the input in the view, okay, for the picture was called the picture. This will get the data uploaded for that input control, right? And I can pass that over to my add picture method, okay? Don't worry about the red underlining, that'll go away when we actually have the code for it. Now, down here, I'm passing the files, but that's the parameter that I created okay, up in the top uh, in the signature of the actual uh, method itself. All right, quick question, good review. Why is this REF here? What does that do for me reference. in code? Yeah, reference, right? So I'm passing not the actual object, but a reference to the object. Remember what the difference is in C Sharp? Pretty much the same in any language, right? If I just pass the object, by default it creates a copy of the object. And any changes I make in my other method, okay, my other code, don't get passed back. <laughs> okay, I lose any changes I make. Passing it by reference, really I'm just passing a reference to the object, so any changes I make actually are being made to the real applicant object itself. Right? So very important to have that in there. Okay, now I need to add these actual methods. So I'll just go right near the bottom. I usually add new methods down here. I'm just going to grab them out of my uh, copy-paste file. Give me a second. Bum, 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 bum. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. All right. There'll be a little bit of uh, red underlining until I add system.io to the usings up top. Okay. All right. So let's first of all deal with add picture. Right? So we pass in our applicant, our reference object, and then my one file, notice the same type, right, that I passed with that request.files reference. Okay, now first thing to do is check if it's null, <laughs> right? Maybe I didn't pass a file, then I'm done. Psh, out of here, nothing to do, right? If we actually are given a file, then I'll grab the MIME type, the file length, and have an if to make sure that the MIME type contains image. Because all of that, whether it's a PNG or JPEG or bitmap or anything else, somewhere in the MIME type it seems to have the word image. So that's a pretty good test for us, right? So you don't want to try and add a picture here with something that isn't some type of an image. And the file length is greater than zero. And this is the same kind of code we did do quickly last term as well. So, right? so we grab a stream object, I'll prepare uh, a byte array to hold the data. And then when I call the file stream dot read, okay, it reads the file, populates my byte array, I read it through from the zero position right to the file length, right? And that pulls all the data, puts it into my byte array, right? What I do with that? Well, now I create a new applicant image, okay? Uh, oh, sorry, I have an if here because remember we're going to call this both from create and from edit. We only have one picture, right? So if you're editing the picture, you're just going to replace the content of the picture. But if it's a new applicant you're creating and you're uploading it, then you're creating a new picture, right? Actually, you can create a new picture even in an edit, but that's if there isn't a picture there already. <laughs> so that's why my if is, if the image is null, right? So if there is no image, then the file that was uploaded, okay, will create a new applicant image object, right? Pulling the data from the uploaded file, assigning it to the necessary properties there, and it's simply a matter of assigning, okay, uh, this image object that we've created to the applicant image of the applicant itself. Bada bing, bada boom. 
else. In other words, if there already is an image, okay, a profile picture for the applicant, then all we really do is we replace the byte array, the image content, and the MIME type with the new one that was uploaded. Okay. That handles both editing, okay, basically replacing the image, or simply adding it if there isn't one there. Any questions about that code? I know it's going by pretty quick, but you'll have a copy of all the code when we're done. Add documents gets a little more interesting because we're, of course, we're passing in our whole collection, our innumerable collection of files, right? So guess what? Whenever you have a collection, you usually see a for each, right? There's, as long as it's an innumerable collection, you can use a for each loop. Otherwise, you have to use a counted loop. Big deal, but they both work, right? So for each, I called it docs in here. I don't know why, just because I've done that in the past. So <laughs> there you go. So for each one, then we'll grab the MIME type, the file name, the file length, and just checking okay, before I try to do anything more, do I actually have something in here? Because it's possible to select an empty file, right? When you're browsing around files, a text file has nothing in it and things like that. Right? So we actually have a name and some content, so we're good. Right? So same kind of code, okay? But this time, I, I'm not worried about an if structure because uh, notice in my comments here, note, you could filter for MIME types if you only want to allow certain types like PDFs, right? Maybe you only want PDF files. Well, then you can put it in an if structure like we did for images, right? Uh, things like that. But I'm just going to set up to allow any kind of file to be uploaded here for now. I don't care. Give me a file. Any file will do, right? Okay. Uh, so we're always adding files in this case. Okay, remember, we're going to allow somebody else to take over when we're done and create a whole controller so you can delete files, edit files, and so on and so forth, right? So for now, we're just always adding files. So I just have to go create a new file object, a new A file object, right? And then uh, it will, of course, have a new file content object created inside of it because of the one-to-one -one between a file and file content where we grab then the content, the byte array, the MIME type, that goes into our file content. File name is in a property of the actual A file. Anyway, when we're done, we just go to applicant, the files that add. That's the line of code that burns and crashes if we don't create that little empty hash set, right, inside the constructor for the applicant. If we don't initialize the files collection, when you go to dot add, it will fail, right? So that's an important thing. Okay, so that's basically all there is. And we can reuse this logic for both edit and so on. How are we doing for time? I better keep moving. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to go over an hour. I apologize, but it's definitely going to take more than an hour here. Not too much more, but a little bit. All right, let's, let's worry about edit then. Inside edit, okay, first of all, the same thing. I've got to modify my begin form, right? The only difference between this code and the code I pasted last time it's just the action I'm calling. I'm calling the edit action okay, when we post this data. Right? The same enclosure type and so on and so forth. All right. Now, if we're going to edit the image, I probably want to see the image okay? because I might decide to replace it or just remove it. Right? So I've got a little div ready to put in here. Uh, I could put it most anywhere. Um, maybe I'll throw it right here at the top. Kind of makes sense to put the picture at the top of the page. Okay. So if we actually have an image to show, if we don't, then we'll just skip over it, right? But if there is an image to show, then it's the same trick we talked about last term where we can convert that byte array to a base64 string. And that allows us to set that with a little bit of manipulation of the string as the image source, right? So it gets embedded right in the HTML of the page, so to speak, right? Notice we're also gonna throw in a checkbox where if they decide, I just wanna remove the picture, Oops, I accidentally uploaded the wrong one, or, oh, I just hate that picture. My hair is just awful in it. I want to put a new, I just want to get it off there, right? Then I can check off this remove image checkbox and just remove it instead of replacing it, right? That can all go in there. And then underneath, okay, I'll have actually a, a spot then with input type equals file name the picture. Okay, for, if I just want to replace the picture, I can go and browse and find a new picture to put as my profile picture instead. Okay, so that's good there. Uh, maybe again down near the bottom right before we do this. Once again, I'll throw in a little form group. Actually a couple of them. Right, the first one 
the label just says current documents, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll just have a little for each loop here because I'll have to make sure I do the include, right? So I have all the files. But remember, the file doesn't actually have the content. We've shoveled that out to the file content object. So I can do a dot include on files and it'll still be fast and performant because I'm not slowing it down with the actual content of the file. But it means I can loop through and just show all the file names, right? What are the current documents here? And then that will help me decide if I want to add additional uploads, okay? So this div is here with, yet again, input type equals file, multiple, multiple, and notice I'm reusing the same name, the files, okay? No harm in doing that, it's a different view anyway. All right, so that's it for the edit. So now I'll be able to select new files to add in addition to the ones that are already there if I want. Remember, editing and so on will be handled with its own controller later on by somebody else. <laughs> okay, so going back to the controller now for edit, I'll just shrink everything down. Okay, let's come up here. We do, for edit, have to work in both the get and the post. Not much in the get requires changing, but remember, we have a dot include only right now for the skills collection. But we're going to need two more dot includes, right? We need a dot include for the application image and for the collection of files. So that's the quick little change there, okay? So I'm including all this with the applicant as I pass it over to the edit view when it's initially requested. Okay, now the rest of the work goes in the post, right? So the edit post, and again, same kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to want to uh, add a parameter or two here, two in this case, right? Because remember, we have that checkbox now for if we just want to remove the image. So that requires a parameter. Okay, so I'll add my string to hold the value from check remove image, and then my usual enumerable collection of files that are uploaded from the files input control. Okay, down here, once again, I need to add my other includes, okay, to the uh, <coughs> applicant. Remember, this is my applicant to update, right? Just throw those other two includes in as well. Okay. Now, we come down here to our try update model. That's all good. I could either before I update applicant skills or afterwards, it doesn't matter. Uh, I could add my little bit of code here. So there's a if structure because of the checkbox, right? Okay. If I've checked off checks remove, right? Well, sorry. If I, <laughs> if I have checked it off so it's not equal null, right? Then all I have to do to remove the image, it's so easy, right? I just take my applicant object and the dot applicant image equals null, right? I clear it out by setting equal to null. And then when I save the applicant, the, the entity framework is smart enough to go and just delete that, okay, from the actual applicant image collection. All right, there we go, no more image. So if it won't be in database anymore? it won't be in the database anymore. Just by setting it to null here, it will delete it from the database. Yeah. Now else, okay, basically, in other words, if I've uploaded a file, but I didn't check off or move, right, then I'm going to replace it, okay? So I'll call my add picture again, once more passing request.files the picture, but this time, of course, it's applicant to update. Right? But I'm reusing that same add code for the documents, Okay, I've already shown them which ones are here already, but if they've gone out and selected, browsed around, selected some more to add as additional documents, no problem. I just call the same add documents method, passing the files okay, that I passed as a new parameter. And that's it. Okay, We're done for edit. Okay, I mean, obviously you might want to in detail show the picture and show more details about the files and so on, but I'm going to skip that over. I'll leave some of the work for you to do, right? But maybe just on the index, I'll share a little bit here. On the index view, probably you'd probably want to add another column, right, to show what files have been uploaded. Okay, uh, so we know columns are done down here. Right now, I have all these uh, uh, links at the top of the column for sorting purposes, right? So basically, I need another disabled one. So I could copy this, paste again, and I'll just change this. Uh, it'll be input type submit disabled, but the value, of course, I'll change. So the caption essentially at the top will say something like, I don't know, uploaded files, okay, something like that. 
down inside the for each loop where we deal with each applicant, okay? I already have one table data structure here to show all the skills, the multiple skills. Well, right after that, I'm gonna do something that's almost identical, okay, with a for each loop, right? But this time I'm gonna go through the applicants dot files collection, okay? Again, I don't actually load the content of the files, just the simple file, a file class that has the name and the description. So uh, for each one, I'll just show the name. But I thought for fun, right? Why not instead of just showing like I did up here dot skill name, I am gonna show the file name, but I'm gonna wrap it as a link using HTML action link, right? It's going to pass, okay? It's gonna basically pass uh, information to the download. I haven't made it yet, but it's the same one was in our first PowerPoint, right? Almost exactly. So the download is a file content result action inside of our controller that I'm gonna add in a moment. So the idea is it'll show the file name as a link. You click on it and it'll download the file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not, right? So it'll list all of that. Of course, we have to pass the ID of the file, right? So we'll just get that from our, our A file object as we move through each one, just passing the ID, right, as the ID of the file to download. Okay, and that's it for the index, right? Let's just come back. A bit more work to do just in the index action of the controller, so way to the top. Okay, kind of feel like, you know, with the Jolly Green Giant, remember? Or no, the Friendly Giant. Everybody see that show? Way up, where's Rusty? Okay, nobody under, all right, never mind. Okay, so here we have, uh, uh, sorry, our index action, right? Okay, let me expand it here so we can see the code. So basically, uh, we have our link query here with our dot include. Well, let me just replace it with the new version. And uh, I have it here. All we're really doing is we're adding additional includes, right? So just make sure I include the skills and the files, right? Uh, or the files in addition to the skills. Skills was already there. So that's the only change there. Um, but of course, I actually have to add my download, right? So again, control N, bring me down here. I usually put it above dispose. I'll just add this quick little bit of code. You could flush it out with some proper error handling in case you're past the null ID and so on and so forth, but focusing on the working code itself, okay? I get the ID of the file I want because it's part of the link. So I just go in with a link query, files. Now here's where my dot include for the file content. So when I go and grab the individual file, it will also include the byte array, the file content, okay? The where clause is just for the uh, ID, right? I have to use where because I have a dot include. And I just say return file, the file content result, passing okay, the byte array, which of course is in the file, dot file content, right? Because it's in that subordinate entity. Same with the mine type, but the file name itself is just right in the A file object, okay? So that will just prompt you to download it. And that, my friends, is that. That should give us all the code for adding files. So I'll pick a browser, any browser. Ooh, which one do I want to use? I did Internet Explorer last time. Okay. I didn't even do a build, but it's doing one for me. So it'll crash and burn if I have any errors. Okay, let's log in. Darn security. And min1 at outlook.com. Password. <laughs> you think I'd be able to type password, right? Okay. All righty. Sure. There we go. So if we go to applicants. Don't ask again. Okay, then we see my new column here for uploaded files. So let's do, we'll try edit. First of all, I click edit. Profile picture. Ah, do I have any pictures? I think I have to come all the way over to the lab. I don't think there's anything I can use useful in the local C drive. 
I remember last term I grabbed some pictures and threw them up for demo purposes in Prog 1612. There we are, I have a pictures folder. Pick a picture. Is he a kind of an alien, Fred? Yeah, I guess he is today anyway. All right, so I'll pick a picture for his profile picture. Here are my current documents, is none, but I can add more here, right? Additional uploads. Um, num, 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 num. Uh, look through documents. I've downloaded. Oh, here's a couple. I can select both, right? You can hold control down, click, click. You can do shift or you can just drag over. So I've got two files selected. Click open. There we go. Now check off a, oh, he's also got leadership skills. Just to make sure that's still working, okay? So Fred Flintstone, okay, I can see the two files, right? Now I can click on the actual links for these and my file content. Do you want to, uh, yeah, let's just open it. And there we go. Right. So there's my files. I can just get, get them as easy as that. If I click edit, oh, <laughs> there's the picture <laughs> of Fred. Boy, he's having a rough day today. <laughs> right? Uh, if I want to just remove the picture, I could just check that off. And that would, or if I want instead, I could just browse and find a new picture. Uh, uh, he's, uh, is he cat's eyes? Yeah, we'll, we'll do cat's eyes. I can see the current documents, but I could upload an additional one. I <laughs> run out of documents in there. Surely I can find something in here. Oh no, okay. <laughs> Gotta be something. Uh, I know, I don't want to upload a whole video. Um, num, 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 num. Uh, oh, there we go, and uh, Eula. Okay, we'll add an additional document there. All right, and you notice that it did get our leadership, so the skills check boxes are still working. We didn't break anything there. All right, so you see it's working. Let's just check the create. So I'll browse. Uh, this will be a model applicant. Uh, name is A. A. 905-555-1212. A at home.com. I think for a little while, Kojiko used home.com for their email address. I don't know. Anyone else remember that? Uh, we'll grab the uh, EULA and click create. Okay, so there's AA, right? There's our file we uploaded. I could have done multiple ones, but I didn't have it handy. Oh, there we go. There's the uh, image and everything as well. You can check to remove. Click save. Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh, there you go. Good thing I left you something to fix on your own. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, enough of a demo for now. Any questions? Obviously, what you need, you have to add a controller for maintaining files, right? Probably what you do is you set it up so if you navigate there from a given applicant, okay, then you just let them see the files that they've uploaded so they can edit them, delete them, things like that. You know, there's lots you can do to take this and run with it. You'd need to add the ability to uh, uh, select a, f a particular resume they want to submit with an application and so on. But we still have the basics more or less in place, one or two bugs for you to fix, but not too many, I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure, right? Uh, so you have the basics in place for file uploads, multiple uploads, single uploads, one to one, one to many, and away you go. Any final questions? Is that a good practice to use schemas in the real world?